and welcome everyone to today's webinar showcasing the new DuraCloud managed service as well as the new subscription plans and uh, significantly reduced pricing that's now available. Um, as you all may be aware, my name is Carissa Smith and I am the DuraCloud Partner Specialist who will be doing the today's uh, demonstration session as well as the main point of contact for any and all of your DuraCloud questions today and into the future. Assuming all of you can see my screen, it should say uh, DuraCloud New Managed Service and Pricing, and I'm going to get started. So give me one moment while I minimize this screen. So I thought we'd just jump into the session today. Um, I will showcase the actual DuraCloud Managed Service first, and then at the end um, I will showcase and discuss the new subscription plans that DuraCloud is offering as well as the pricing. And then, of course, at the end of the session there will be um, plenty of time for for any questions that you may have, which I will answer, of course. Um, if you do have questions, feel free to put them into the chat window. Um, and my hostess today, Christy Searle, who is the DuraSpace um, participant, will be monitoring the chat window uh, for questions as well as for any technical issues that you may have. So feel free to send a chat directly to the DuraSpace participant or put that into the chat window. And if you're having technical questions or issues with the system, um, she will get back to you as as soon as she can. Uh, again, with that, I'm going to start today's uh, session at the DuraCloud um, Dura web application. Um, as a customer of the DuraCloud managed service, uh, we would set up a, a DuraCloud instance on your behalf, and it would be located at the URL of your choosing. Um, so for today's demo, I'm using the demo uh, DuraCloud account, and again, it's located at demo.duracloud.org. Um, as a customer, you could let us know and customize that URL to your institution name .duracloud.org. Again, um, that is a customization setting that you get as a as a customer of the of the managed service. Uh, no more details on that. I'm just going to simply log in and get us started. Um, I should note that the uh, the application that I just logged into is a web application, um, obviously, and it sits on top of your uh, content that you've stored in the cloud. And depending on what subscription plan you've, you've signed up for, um, your cloud account could be integrated with Amazon. It could be integrated with Rackspace. Um, again, those are customizations you make at the subscription level. Um, and the Dura Cloud service itself um, is a web application that sits on top of that content. Let me just orient you to the screen that you're seeing right now. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to start over here in the top right-hand side of your screen. You can see that I logged in as a user. Um, that's just my, my test user for the purposes of today's demo, but as a customer of managed service, you would, of course, create your own um, personal user profile and use that to log into your own DuraCloud account. Um, below that, you'll see a link to our help documentation area, of course, and as well as the ability to log out. Directly below that, you'll see the provider. Uh, information and that gives you an indication that the content that I will be demoing uh, within this area is currently stored with Amazon um, Web Services. So it is stored at the Amazon um, Cloud Storage Provider. Um, the plan that I'm demoing today, the Preservation Plus plan, um, actually includes um, an additional provider and that is Rackspace. Um, and again, that's contingent on the plan that you choose. The Preservation Basic Plan only um, integrates with Amazon. Um, so directly on the right-hand side of your screen, you can select the provider that you're viewing uh, from the drop-down window. Um, to give you further visual indication that you're in the Amazon storage area, um, I'm going to go over here on the left-hand side of my screen. You can see the web, Amazon Web Services logo. And again, that just gives you a visual indication that the content that you're viewing uh, within the web, web interface is stored at Amazon. If I were to select Rackspace from the provider pull-down, you could see that the interface itself looks almost exactly the same, with the exception of, of course, you selected Rackspace in the provider pull-down, but you also now have the Rackspace logo here on the left-hand side of your screen. And I'll note here that uh, the content items will be the same, but I'll delve into that in just one moment. So moving back to the Amazon area, I'm going to go from left to right on your screen. Um, in terms of how the interface, the DuraCloud interface itself is oriented, um, we do do a left, left to right orientation, and you get more information and drill down into further detail uh, the farther right you go on your screen. So the first column you'll see is the spaces column, and the spaces 
term terminology is is essentially DuraCloud speak for a content container, a content bucket, a content holder, uh, whichever you prefer. Um, it is somewhat analogous to a um, a folder that you would have on your local machine. Um, although we don't uh, enable nested spaces, as you could see nested uh, folders, folders within folders on, on your desktop, for instance. Um, but again, it, it's very similar. It's essentially a content container. Um, as, a, as a subscriber to one of our preservation plans, and in this case I'm, I'm demoing the preservation plus plan, which again I will describe the subscription plans once we get to that section, um, so no need to memorize that right now. Um, you have a limited number of spaces that you have access to. So in this case, there are two spaces at the Preservation Plus level, um, which are set up for you. To view the content items that are stored in a space, you simply click on the space name itself. And again, as I mentioned, you get more information as you move uh, to the right on your screen. The center panel is the content items panel. And again, as you can see, it lists the content items that are currently stored within that space. You can see a list of eight content items. And then on the right-hand side of your screen is always the detail panel. And the details that you view are contingent upon what you've selected within the interface. So in this case, I have a space selected, so I will see the space detail. And I'm just going to walk down uh, the space detail panel uh, really quickly and explain uh, the content that you see here and how you can interact with it. So directly below the space detail heading itself is, of course, the name of the space that you've selected, as well as the ability to delete the space. So not only does it delete the space, but it will, of course, delete all of the content items that are held within the space. Um, of course, you can delete that, uh, delete your content in DuraCloud at any point in time that you wish to. Let me give you that option. Moving down here in the details panel, you can see the number of content items that are currently stored within the space as well as the date that the space itself was created. So it was created uh, in November of 2010. You can also see uh, this really great uh, feature that's new, uh, and this is, this is a new feature in the Dura Cloud Managed Service that I'm going to spend a little time uh, talking about today, and that's the health check feature. Um, so new to this, this round of uh, DuraCloud release is an automated health check service, or what we call a bit integrity checker service, that runs in the background um, on every single DuraCloud account, regardless of what subscription plan you've signed up for. Um, and it iterates over all of your content, checking the health or the integrity of each and every uh, individual content item that you have stored in DuraCloud. And again, we run this, uh, this service on your behalf in the background. Um, and we provide you with a report um, of the last time a space's content was checked. So you can see that indeed for this Carissa Images space, um, its last health check occurred on Tuesday, May 1st. And um, not only does it tell you that it was a successful check, but you get a nice green uh, bar indicating that it was a success. If there had been an integrity issue detected, it would be a red bar, of course, and give you further information. Um, you can click uh, the report hyperlink here. It's, it's, it's somewhat buried underneath my mouse. Um, and that will give you a pop-up window, giving you even further detail about what was checked and when and what the, um, what the status is. So let me back up for just one moment and explain what exactly that, that means. Um, the pop-up window that you see in front of you are the exact report, um, report and details from the integrity service that we have running in the background. As I mentioned, it runs over the entire space, which is here the leftmost column in this report. And it also tells you the individual content item that was checked, so the name of the content item, as well as um, the MD5 values that were checked. So OK, let's now take a step back for a minute. Um, the DuraCloud interface, when you upload an individual content item, will automatically check and calculate uh, the MD5 checksum value. So for those of you who are not familiar with what MD5 or checksums are, um, I typically use the analogy of a human fingerprint or human DNA. It's an individually identifying piece of information for each and every single content item that you upload to DuraCloud. Our service will calculate that MD5 and then store that MD5 um, for the life of that content item's existence in DuraCloud. So the first column you'll see are the stored MD5 values for each and every content item. And then our integrity checking service will um, not only pull the stored MD5 checksum value, but it will also recalculate that MD5 value on the fly and then compare the two. And essentially uh, what the service is doing is making sure that 
over the course of having this content item stored in this case Amazon no integrity issues no bit rot has occurred um, and that your content is still healthy and you can see that uh, report here on the rightmost column of this table in the valid section so again it's telling you that the stored MD5, MD5 value uh, matches the recalculated MD5 value um, at the time that the service was run. And again, you can download the raw report um, up here via the download raw report uh, button. So it just it essentially gives you um, a spreadsheet of all of the same information that you see in the pop-up window. And again, I just want to reiterate that this is available. The health check services that run automatically in the background are available for every single subscription level um, that uh, you can sign up for in DuraCloud. It is a, a feature that we provide um, off the bat. So as soon as you add your content into DuraCloud, our health checking services will automatically take effect and start checking the health of your content, ensuring that your content stored in the cloud um, remains healthy. Moving down here in the space detail panel below the health check uh, is a nice graph of the history of content added to the space. And it's broken out um, in bytes, which you can see in yellow, and also in the number of files. So you can do a visual comparison how your space uh, size has changed, both in bytes, uh, bytes taken up or used, as well as the files, uh, number of files. And any of these um, graphs at the, at the matrice areas, um, you can hover over and see the details um, that are comprising the graph. So you can see all the way back in July of uh, 2011, almost a year ago, I had only two items. And if I can hover correctly, uh, I had 28 megabytes of storage. And then I can scroll all the way over uh, to the end in time and see how things have changed, both in terms of uh, megabytes as well as the number of items. Moving down again, we have more graphic information about the content that's stored in this space. Um, so you can see as of May 4th, um, the, again, a breakout in terms of the uh, files that are stored there by, based on file size and file count. And I'll also point out that the colors do correspond in both of these pie charts. So you can see that my JPEG 2 images take up a, a big, more than half of the space in terms of size, but there's only actually two um, JPEG 2000s within that space, so they're taking up a lot of uh, a lot of actual gigabyte, megabyte storage, but aren't uh, actually very high in number. If you're not a graphical person, that's fine. We have a little data icon here that'll give you a pop-up window that um, that shows you all of the data that's used to create these pie charts that you can very easily then use uh, in in your own reports. And then below that, you'll see the properties and tags that you can add uh, to this space. Um, one thing I'll underscore is that properties are simply name value pairs that you add at the space level, and then they get stored with the space information at, at the storage provider level. And again, you can add as many properties and tags as you'd like uh, through the interface itself. Going back here to the content detail um, area for one moment, the content items. Um, Assuming you have seen all of the space detail information that you're interested in, if you click on a content item, you'll see that the detail panel now shows you the content detail. And again, the detail panel is here on the right-hand side of your screen. Directly below the content detail header itself is, again, the name of the content item. Uh, but this time, it is a hyperlink to the actual location where this content item is stored. So you can very easily uh, access this content item directly. Um, for those of you who are interested, um, the Preservation Basic and Plus plans um, actually have all of your content in closed spaces, meaning um, they are dark. You would have to have a DuraCloud login uh, to access uh, this particular content item and all of the content items for that matter uh, via this URL. Um, however, you can request that certain spaces be open to the public, meaning that this URL is then accessible uh, to anyone who happened to know what that URL is. You could pass it around to colleagues, or you could then embed uh, the URL into your own application. So again, um, within DuraCloud, each and every content item has a, has a, a unique URL uh, to where it's stored available. Depending on whether you have a space open or closed, you can give access to that content item to the public or not. 
Um, we really are flexible in that we want to either provide dark archives or light archives or, or a hybrid, um, depending on what your individual use case is. Moving down directly below uh, the URL to the content item, you'll see the MIME type that's associated with uh, this content item. Our service will automatically uh, detect and then assign the appropriate MIME type based on the file extension uh, when you upload a content item. Um, again, it'll recognize all of the, the standard, most popular um, file extensions and assign the appropriate MIME type. But if you have a very uh, unique um, file extension, our service will just assign a, a generic uh, MIME type. But you can very easily edit uh, the MIME type if it's set in, incorrectly or um, it is something that's very particular. Uh, here in this edit button, you'll get a pop-up window where you can edit the MIME type very easily. Uh, moving to the right of the edit button, you'll see the copy button. And this allows you to create a copy of this content item, this morning mist image. And you can store that content item, the copy, uh, within the same space. So I can create a copy within the same Carissa images space. I could uh, assign the copy to also uh, live in the Carissa video test space, the other space that I have listed here in my system. Or I can have the uh, DuraCloud service create that copy and store it in Rackspace if I choose. So again, you can create a copy and then tell our service to store it uh, in, in a couple various locations. You can, of course, always download your content uh, after it's been stored in DuraCloud by clicking the download button here in the center of the content detail panel. Of course, you can view content items that are, are viewable uh, file types. And again, you can delete content items individually if you'd like. Below the, uh, the function buttons is a nice preview uh, that's available for images that are um, stored in DuraCloud. And this is leveraging our image server service. Uh, for the technical folks in the crowd, we're leveraging an open source Jatoka image viewing service that allows you a very sophisticated uh, interaction with your content, uh, your image content. Um, it allows you to pan, tile, and zoom uh, within, uh, within an image itself. And again, for the technical folk in the crowd, the uh, Jatoka image service itself automatically converts any file format to a JPEG 2000 on the fly. So that gives you, uh, enables you to have this really nice, sophisticated interaction um, with your image files. And we found that this is really good for very large image files, such as maps or book scans, et cetera. Um, it's come into, uh, come into use. Below the preview, you'll see uh, further details about the content item itself in terms of the space where it's currently stored, uh, its overall size that it's taking up, as well as its modified date, meaning the date that it was added to DuraCloud. And then below that, you can see the checksum uh, value that is assigned to this content item. And again, just to, to recap what I said before, um, every time you upload or add a content item into DuraCloud, our service will automatically calculate the checksum for you and then store uh, that checksum value uh, with that content item for the length of its existence. So until you delete that content item, we'll always have a checksum value that's associated with it. And again, DuraCloud leverages MD5 checksums, um, and, and that's the, the algorithm that it uses in the MD5 checksums that it stores. I see I have a couple questions coming in via the chat, which I will be sure to get to at the end of today's session. Directly below the checksum value are both the properties and tags, again, that you can add at the, um, at the content item level. So you can add them both the space and the content item level. And again, you can add as many um, as you'd like. So taking a step back for one moment, um, seeing your content in DuraCloud and having this beautiful web application is, is all well and good, but how do you actually get your content into DuraCloud in the first place? Um, so I wanted to review the three different methods um, of how you add content to DuraCloud based on, um, based on your use case, based on your, your technical abilities and, and your interests. So the first and probably the easiest and most straightforward is adding items via the web interface itself. So you cl simply click Add Items. You'll get a little pop-up window here, which takes a little uh, while to load on my machine when I have <laughs> my web sharing uh, capability running. Um, but essentially, this upload tool will allow you to select um, many files and folders from your local machine and then uh, upload them to the DuraCloud interface all through uh, the web application. Uh, a couple things I'll note is that if you've selected a lot of content, many, many, many files, folders, movies, um, 
images, etc. Um, you're going to have to wait for a little while um, while it bulk uploads all of that content. Of course, it's contingent on your um, your local bandwidth capabilities um, and your local internet connection. <clears throat> um, so here here we have it. Here <laughs> here's a multiple uh, multi-upload tool uh, via the web interface. And again, you would simply click this Add Files and Folders here down at the bottom uh, left of this pop-up window. And again, you would then uh, have the ability to browse to your local machine to add content. And again, this is all through the web interface. Uh, the second method to add content to DuraCloud is through uh, a couple of our utilities that do come with DuraCloud. Um, one of the utilities in particular, the synchronization utility, is a command line tool that you would download and interact with at the command line, of course. Um, and essentially what it allows you to do is point it at a local file uh, hierarchy directory structure. It can be as flat or as nested, uh, um, either, either or. Our sync tool can, uh, can uh, accommodate that. Essentially you point it at your local um, file structure that holds your content. And then you also insert your DuraCloud credentials, and the sync tool will essentially bulk upload all of that content to DuraCloud. Um, you can run that synchronization tool in, in one of two ways. You can run it as a, a bulk upload tool, so essentially tell it to upload all of the content and then shut down as soon as it's uploaded everything. Or you can run it in a true synchronization fashion, meaning that you can point it at a local directory and tell the sync tool con to continually watch for any uh, content additions or content changes. And it will note those changes and upload uh, any of those additions or changes to DuraCloud, essentially um, creating a replica cloud, cloud copy of your, local, uh, of your local content. And again, this is really a great um, tool for institutions who have a use case where they have a, a local repository, for instance, that's changing on a semi-regular basis, and they want to have a, um, a live cloud copy of their content uh, available for um, recovery and disaster uh, type scenarios. So again, you can run the bulk, or excuse me, you can run the sync tool in, in two different ways, um, kind of in a one-off bulk upload fashion, upload everything and then shut down, or in a true synchronization fashion where you would keep it running uh, and watching your local, your local content for any changes. The third and final way that you can add content to DuraCloud is via the DuraCloud REST APIs. And um, the, this this is a great uh, capability for the programmers and tech folk uh, in, in the crowd. Um, it allows you to create your own uh, applications for uploading content, downloading um, to interact with DuraCloud. And again, that's via the DuraCloud REST APIs. So to recap the ways you add content to DuraCloud, you can do it through the web interface via the Add Items button here in the center of your screen. You can add content via the synchronization utility, which is a command line tool that you would run on your local machine or a connected uh, networked server. Or you can uh, leverage the DuraCloud REST APIs um, from a programmatic standpoint to add content to DuraCloud. So again, that's how you would add content to DuraCloud. Um, a couple other things I wanted to showcase within the, uh, the Preservation Plus plan that I'm demonstrating today is the ability um, it, to create a replica copy of your content in uh, two different cloud storage providers. So again, this is a, a feature of the Preservation Plus plan when you have uh, two cloud storage providers integrated with your content. So the first thing I'll note is that I have two spaces here on the left, and in my Carissa Images folder there are eight content items. Uh, if I go over to the Rackspace side of the spectrum, you can see I have the same two spaces. And in the Images folder, I also have the same content. Um, I have the same eight content items. And again, one of the features of the Preservation Plus plan is that we create, uh, we being the DuraCloud service, creates a replica copy in the second secondary cloud provider. So in this case, I'll refer to Rackspace as the secondary cloud. Um, so I'm going to actually upload a content item to this Carissa Images folder in the Amazon area. Let me bring back my pop-up window for one moment and browse and select. I have a JPEG image to add. So I'm simply going to upload uh, this Boston Terrier JPEG image to, um, did I click start upload? Maybe I need to, there we go, um, to my Carissa Images folder. 
and assuming it uploads appropriately and it hasn't timed out since I... <laughs> there we go. Now you get to see the upload tool in action. So we have successfully uploaded uh, my Boston Terrier image. I'm going to refresh the space and you will now see that the Carissa images space has nine content items. And again, one of the features of the Preservation Plus plan when you have two storage providers is that our service will automatically create um, that secondary copy and keep it synchronized. So if you navigate over to the Rackspace storage area and click on the Carissa Images space, it will shortly have the uh, Boston Terrier image that I just added. Um, so our service will automatically keep your um, cloud <clears throat> your two cloud providers uh, synchronized. And again, um, that's, a, that's a, a feature of the Preservation Plus plan, which I'm demoing. Give me just one more moment to get that content item over here into the Rackspace storage area. As you can see, the Boston Terrier JPEG is now listed here in, in Rackspace. And again, um, it's essentially creating a mirror copy. One other thing I wanted to note within the DuraCloud interface before I um, launch over into the subscription plans and pricing and talk about all of that uh, information is that within DuraCloud itself you can also uh, not only view images but you can also stream media files and again um, it's great we give you the nice little interface within uh, DuraCloud itself but you can also embed these media streams within your own applications as well. Um, so I simply clicked on the media file in my content items view here. And then you can see in the content detail panel here on the right, um, a nice little preview of your um, audio or video file. And you can preview it within uh, DuraCloud itself, for instance. And again, you can also embed that stream within your own applications. Um, but I just wanted to give a, a snapshot of, of a couple of the additional services on top of the integrity checking and copy creation synchronization services uh, that we provide in DuraCloud. So with that, I'm going to launch over into the DuraCloud pricing, which is available at duracloud.org slash pricing, and just explain uh, briefly the difference between the new uh, subscription plans um, in terms of what features you get out of the box and what this, the, the cost differential is. So as I mentioned, I was demonstrating the Preservation Plus plan, which is here, this middle panel with the yellow subscribe button. Um, out of the box, it comes with uh, integration with two different cloud storage providers, or what we're terming cloud data centers here, uh, the third, third or fourth row down. In this case, it's Amazon and Rackspace. Um, the Preservation Basic plan, the step down, uh, from that includes just integration with Amazon, for instance. And again, you can see that the pricing uh, takes, into, uh, takes into account that difference, the fact that we're creating just one copy of your content versus having two copies stored in the Preservation Plus plan. Um, of course, uh, integrated with uh, both the Preservation Basic plans are the web console and your ability to add content via the web interface, etc. cetera. Um, we are running the Bit Integrity Checker service uh, over your content for both of these plans at all times and giving you those really great health reports directly into in integrated in the dashboard. Um, as I mentioned, you have a limitation in terms of the number of spaces that you have access to and you also have a limit on the number of users you can um, provide access to your account. Um, we limit for both preservation and basic and plus plans to just two user accounts. Um, as I also mentioned, for the Preservation Plus plan, when you have that additional copy of your content stored in a secondary cloud provider, in this case Rackspace, we will also provide an additional file recovery feature such that if our Bit Integrity Checker service notices that there is a, a health issue with, for instance, that Boston Terrier JPEG that I just uploaded in Amazon, it will then refer to the Rackspace uh, copy of that Boston Terrier image and recover a healthy copy um, so that you never really have to think about um, any integrity issues uh, within your DuraCloud account and cloud, uh, the content you've stored in the cloud. We will auto heal your copies um, when we have two copies to, to do that for. Um, on the preservation basic side, of course, because we only have one copy of your content, we're not able to provide that service. 
Um, moving over to the DuraCloud Enterprise plans, um, we have both a standard and a premium. Um, the difference, again, is in terms of how many cloud data centers it is integrated with. You can see the standard out of the box comes with one cloud data center, that being Amazon. And the premium, uh, very much like the preservation base, or excuse me, preservation plus plan would be integrated with both Amazon and Rackspace. So we would be keeping two copies of your content, one in Amazon and one in Rackspace. The enterprise plan is really great for institutions who have a very broad, um, broad use cases for DuraCloud. So not only preservation, but also um, the ability to share your DuraCloud account with multiple um, departments or research groups at your institution. Not only does it give you all of the all of the features of both of the preservation basic and plus plans, it allows you the ability to create unlimited spaces, um, provision unlimited user accounts, um, nested in the ability to create multiple spaces and users. Um, we also have more fine-grained permissions and access controls. Um, so at the enterprise level, you can administer uh, who has access to your content at a space-by-space -space level, which again is really great for uh, institutions who have departments or research groups that they'd like to uh, share their DuraCloud account with. They can give the physics department their own space and limit uh, who has access to that physics department space, um, again, through the enterprise account that has more administrative capabilities. Something I should mention um, for folks, um, and it has been a, a pretty hot topic of late, uh, coming soon, uh, by the end of 2012, we will um, offer Shibboleth authentication with DuraCloud. Um, it's not quite available yet, but it certainly uh, will be at the end of the year. Um, and again, just to, to recap these plans, the preservation, both basic and plus plans, we've really tried to cater to folks who have preservation-specific use cases. They'd like to use the cloud to preserve their content and make sure that it remains healthy in the cloud, um, but are not particularly interested necessarily in image, image access, media access, etc. cetera. Um, and then the DuraCloud Enterprise Plan, we've really geared toward uh, institutions who have a wide range of use cases in mind uh, for DuraCloud in that they can uh, run any and all of the services, they can administer their own account, they can create uh, groups and set permissions uh, for those groups and, and share their uh, DuraCloud account with a, a wide range of users at their, at their organization. So again, with that, uh, I think that's really my demo, the heart of both the demo and the discussion of the pricing plans today. And I see I have questions coming in via the chat. Um, and I would encourage everyone now, if you have questions, I'm going to open up the session uh, to take questions and answers. So feel free to type in the chat, and I will, I will start answering the questions as they come in. And we have plenty of time. That was the goal for today's, uh, today's webinar, is to make it interactive here at the end. So with that, I'm going to start with Seth Anderson's questions about, are checksums validated on a regular schedule? Our Bit Integrity Checker service runs on a weekly basis, and we'll continue to run over the content um, on that basis. So <clears throat> it'll start, I believe it starts Saturday at 1 a.m. And if you have you know, not a lot of content and it finishes on Tuesday uh, of the following week, it'll start again on Saturday and run over your content again. If, if it happens to go from Saturday to Saturday and it hasn't finished all of your content, uh, our service will continue to run until it's checked the integrity of, of all of your content. So they are um, validated on a regular schedule, Seth. Mark Evans asks, can other checksum algori algorithms be used such as, such as SHA? Um, right now, Mark, we're just using MD5 checksum uh, algorithms within DuraCloud at the moment, but I would be interested in your use case or if you have any strong um, strong reasons one way or the other why or why not um, we should be using SHA versus MD5 versus any of the other algorithms. So um, feel free to type that in the chat or send me an email afterward. I'd be interested to get your feedback. Shane Beers asks, uh, one can link directly to the files in the cloud storage, correct? Yes, that is true, Shane. Um, each and every content item that's stored in DuraCloud has its own uh, storage URL that you can link to. Um, the gotcha, or the thing that you need to remember, is that spaces and access to the spaces can be either open or closed. Um, if it's in an open space, you can send that link out to anybody in, in, in <laughs> who has an internet connection and they can gain access to that content item. 
Um, but you can also, and by default on all of our plans, your spaces are closed, meaning that you would be presented with the DuraCloud login screen and need to have a DuraCloud account before you could access that content item. So again, we make it flexible in terms of whether you want to have a light, dark, or semi-transparent <laughs> uh, uh, DuraCloud account and then access to, uh, to that content. And again, it's on a space level. Dave Allen asks if we are planning on supporting Athens for authentication. Um, right now, our main focus is on Shibboleth, and I haven't heard anything uh, amongst our development team about supporting Athens. But again, I'd be interested to hear uh, your use case or reasons uh, for asking that question, and, and, and in particular, you know, why 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 is it important to you, and how you would uh, use it. Uh, Mark Evans asks, are there additional charges for accessing downloading content from the cloud? Um, <clears throat> built in now to the subscription plans are uh, a base level of access slash download. So when you pay for uh, storing three terabytes of content, it also comes with three terabytes of access or download. Um, if you happened to have a um, an access-based use case, so you have interest in, in streaming media from DuraCloud and you anticipate um, a lot of a lot of folks accessing your your media files, then um, we would have to have a, a separate conversation to estimate uh, your download uh, usage or your access usage. But again, built into the plans right now is is a level um, equal to the amount of content you've stored, and we haven't had any any users go above that at this point. Uh, Shane Beers notes, good question mark. And then, is there a limit on bandwidth and or total data sent? Uh, there is not. Um, again, all of the upload charges are included in the, the price on these plans. And again, download up to the capacity that you're storing. So if you decide to store three terabytes, you can download three terabytes. Um, but if you have only stored three terabytes and you're noticing a 10 terabyte download because you have a media access uh, use case, uh, we'll work with you to estimate those charges. And then, let's see, Dave Allen also says, I assume that for sites with greater than 10 terabytes, the pricing is cheaper. Yes, the pricing is substantially cheaper, and that's why we note at the bottom of the pricing page, if you have more than 10 terabytes you'd like to store, um, your cost will be cheaper per terabyte um, at that point. So uh, again, we provide custom quotes depending on exactly how much greater than 10 terabytes you're planning on storing. Uh, and then Dave also notes that Athens is planned for the state and national libraries in Austria, Austria, Australia, New Zealand instead of Shibboleth. Interesting to note, Dave. I will pass it on to the developers. Um, Shibboleth has been a, uh, a popular, uh, popular authentication authorization system here in the U.S., and that's why we're adding it into the fold. Um, but I will ask them if there are plans for integrating Athens. Scott asks, what kind of file types can this service stream? And does it function as a progressive download or actual streaming? Um, we do have limitations in terms of what file types you can stream. Uh, we're leveraging Amazon CloudFront. Um, so there is a, a list of acceptable types. Um, I know FLV files, MP3, MP, MP4 uh, can stream from, from DuraCloud via the Amazon CloudFront streaming, um, but not, not every single uh, audio and video file is supported. And I can um, send out that link to the supported files um, uh, to folks if that's of interest. Um, and then you ask if it's a function as progressive download or actual streaming. It's actual streaming. You're not, you don't actually download the file and then stream it. So you can um, easily um, click around into your in your file streams and only get charged for the actual amount of streaming that occurs. Um, so if you have a three megabyte or three gigabyte file, you're not actually streaming the whole three gigabytes. You're only streaming out uh, the amount that your user watches. And so if they only watch 30 seconds of your of your um, video of a five minute video, that's all uh, that gets charged. Um, Shane Beers asks three terabytes per year per month. Um, right now, our plans are on an annual basis. So you pay for storage um, for three terabytes per year. So within that year, you could download um, an equal amount of content. Uh, Guest says, I'm thinking that DuraCloud uh, Preservation Plus might be a good short-term solution for our streaming media files that currently have no secure on-campus home. After a few years, the hope would be that local campus has fully developed 
uh, a longer term archiving plan, presumably content in uh, the DuraCloud preservation plan could then come back. You can certainly download your content from DuraCloud at any point in time. Um, I mentioned the synchronization utility. We also have a corollary retrieval utility that essentially, uh, again, is a command line tool that you would point at your DuraCloud account and uh, essentially tell it to bulk download everything from DuraCloud. Um, and again, this is great for folks who are using DuraCloud as more of a, a workbench, um, temporary storage type um, environment, or for folks who have a severe disaster recovery need, um, our retrieval tool uh, really allows for uh, quickly downloading all of your content that's been stored in DuraCloud. Uh, is moving content between cloud providers included in the download limit? Um, I would say it's excluded. It wouldn't count uh, in the download. Um, we automatically are creating those copies uh, for you, so that would, would not be included. Catherine uh, mentions exit strategies, so I'm not quite sure what exit strategies uh, you're referring to, um, whether you, they're your exit strategies from our service or what our, our strategies are. Um, we guarantee, we being the DuraCloud service, guarantees that we will be integrated with no less than two cloud uh, storage providers. So right now I demoed Amazon and Rackspace, but we also are working on integrations with Microsoft Azure and San Diego Supercomputer Cloud Center. Um, so our exit strategy is if you know one of these or a couple of these uh, commercial cloud providers goes out of business or jacks up their prices to an exorbitant uh, amount, we can very easily transition our service to run on another cloud provider platform, um, as well as moving your content uh, appropriately. Um, so that's our exit strategy, um, and I hope that answers your question, Catherine. If not, uh, ask me to clarify a little bit more. Uh, Sheldon asks, for pricing clarity, can you identify the total price for each plan if you had a, a four terabyte collection? I can, and I have my calculator <laughs> calculator handy, Sheldon. So for uh, storing four terabytes at the preservation basic level, it would be $1,500 for your first terabyte, um, plus an additional $1,300 a year for your additional three terabytes. So that would work out to be $5,400 a year. Um, you would simply double that for the preservation plus plan. Um, because we would be storing that additional copy in Rackspace for you, but we only count the, I guess, the primary storage, the Amazon storage, um, so that's included in the pricing. So uh, storing that four terabytes in preservation plus would be uh, a little over $10,000, but again, even though you only gave us four terabytes, we would actually be storing eight terabytes for you, four terabytes in Amazon, uh, four terabytes in Rackspace. And then at the uh, preser excuse me, the enterprise plans, um, the pricing works out to be $5,900 a year for the first terabyte for um, DuraCloud Enterprise Standard, plus uh, $1,300 for uh, each additional terabyte. So, and let me do the calculation because my math in my head is terrible. Um, so for four terabytes at the standard level, it would be uh, a little less than $10,000. And again, you would not quite double that for um, premium. Let me do the math real quick. It would be a little over $11,000, almost $11,000 for premium. And again, the difference between standard and premium is, again, you would actually give us four terabytes and we'd store four terabytes for standard and Amazon. But in the premium, you would have four terabytes in uh, Amazon and four terabytes in rack space. Um, so that's what, where those pricing differential comes down. Uh, Dave Allen asks, can we set up access rights to uh, the AV material? Um, right now, that is not built into DuraCloud. It would be something that you would need to provision uh, within your own applications. So you can certainly stream it out of DuraCloud, but um, providing particular access rights to users or groups or IP addresses or something would be something you would have to uh, integrate with uh, at your own application level. Peter asks, how much how many terabytes are currently managed by DuraCloud? Who are the biggest customers? Um, I don't actually have a terabyte total. Um, we have multiple terabytes at this point now. Um, in particular, I'll mention a couple different uh, customers at the moment. We have um, ICPSR, which is a, a research 
group project nonprofit out of the University of Michigan. Um, MIT is a current customer and they're backing up their local DSpace repository in DuraCloud. Um, Northwestern University is backing up some of their Fedora collection in DuraCloud. And again, I apologize for not having the total terabyte numbers for you. Um, the state of North Carolina, so a non-university affiliated organization, um, their state library and archives will be storing um, roughly around five terabytes of content. They uh, recently signed on to DuraCloud. Um, and again, that will be content coming from both their state library and also their state archives. Uh, let's see, make sure I've not skipped any questions. Dave asks, can we prefix our AV material with notices such as indigenous people may find the following images distressing? Um, again, that would be something you would probably have to um, provide and or uh, program with your own application. Um, we're just streaming a exactly the AV files that you've, you've stored in, in DuraCloud. So again, that would probably be um, a responsibility of the application that you would be embedding these streams uh, within. And then Rick asks, are there any preservation systems that inter integrate with DuraCloud out of the box? Um, I don't know. You might have to give me some examples, uh, Rick, of what you mean by preservation systems. Uh, repositories that integrate with uh, DuraCloud out of the box are DSpace and Fedora. Um, we provide direct integration so that you can easily back up your DSpace repository content and your Fedora repository content within DuraCloud. Essentially, any system that stores its content in a file directory uh, type structure can very easily have its content backed up into DuraCloud. Um, Archivematica, um, again, I'm not that I know of uh, that it integrates out of the box, but again, if it if it um, stores its content in a, a file directory type structure, we could very uh, easily back up the content within uh, within DuraCloud. But um, again, I haven't explored that option. Um, but Marcus notes that Archivematica should not be hard to do. Thank you, Marcus. Um, I should mention that Marcus is a current uh, North Carolina State University Libraries are a current customer of DuraCloud, and they are also backing up their DSpace content um, to DuraCloud as well. And I see a couple other questions coming in, so feel free, everyone, to to keep adding content uh, and questions to the chat. I appreciate the the interaction. Um, and while I have uh, a couple of moments while people um, continue to type their questions, I'll note that. Um, we have two month free trial accounts uh, for DuraCloud. All you have to do is go to duracloud.org and click the try it now button and you can very easily uh, provision a trial account and we'll get you up and started. Um, you're under no obligation to continue using DuraCloud um, if you try it and then decide to walk away. Um, but really and truly, um, doing a two month trial and then you know testing out DuraCloud for a year at the $1,500 level for one terabyte um, seems to be uh, actually a very cost effective and cheaper than trialing uh, Amazon out of the box. And then you can determine in that year window how DuraCloud uh, may fit into your preservation workflow. Um, you don't really even need a preservation system or workflow or plan in place um, if to sign up for DuraCloud. You can very easily just provision an account um, with the additional two month uh, trial account to see where it will and could fit into your plans uh, and, and enable you to to back up and preserve some of your digital content at your organization. Uh, Mark asks, can you share any roadmap features? Um, so I think the, the big one that I mentioned is the shibboleth integration uh, coming, coming soon at the end of the year. Um, trying to think if there's any other uh, capabilities that I can share off the top of my head. Um, we're working with uh, like I mentioned, the San Diego Supercomputer Center to allow um, to allow their storage capabilities as another storage provider. So again, that's another um, a big integration on our plate that we're hoping to launch in the next couple months. So instead of just having uh, Rackspace as your secondary option, you would again have uh, San Diego Supercomputer Center. Um, and also, Through that uh, integration, we're also uh, working with the Chronopolis team so that you could uh, store content in DuraCloud and then uh, provision additional copies stored in Chronopolis as well. So our focus over the, ne the next uh, three to six months is really on providing additional cloud 
uh, cloud storage provider integrations um, for our customers, uh, in addition to the Amazon and Rackspace uh, storage uh, options that we have now. And then uh, guest uh, asks, could you repeat the levels of control we can exert over accessing files? Is it that all are dark by default and that we can account holder administrator then arrange for the option to open some up as we see fit? Okay, that is a very great question and I'm going to answer it based on the plan that you've selected. So for both the preservation basic and preservation plus plans, you are allowed to have two spaces and both of those are dark by default, meaning that you need to be um, uh, have a DuraCloud login to access the account um, and access the content that's stored uh, in there. You can request that those spaces are open to the public um, if you so choose, and then um, we, the DuraCloud service, will open those spaces up so you can give public access to the content that's held within them, um, but that would need to be um, a request that you make as an account um, owner on the Preservation and Basic and PLUS plans um, to let us know that you want to open them up to public access. At the DuraCloud Dura Enterprise plan level, um, you, because you have the enterprise and the administrative control, can make those determinations and those settings um, as an account owner yourself. And again, it's at the space level so that any content stored within a space can either be open to the public or closed. Um, and again, at the enterprise level, uh, you can administer who has access to content or not. Um, at the preservation basic and plus plans, um, the spaces are dark or closed by default and you would need to let us know, um, me in particular, customer support, that you'd like to open up one or two of those spaces. Mark Evans asks a very good question. Is it possible to have a hierarchy within a space or are they um, flat hierarchies? They may appear to be flat hierarchies. Um, we don't have a, a user interface that allows you to see a space within a space. At this point, Mark, that's something that's actually on our roadmap, so you could have nested spaces. However, you can persist a hierarchy uh, in terms of how you name a content item. So if I were to add a content item here that was from a nested file, um, a folder structure um, from my local machine. So I had file one and then file two was nested in that and then I had my content item in file two. Um, it would preserve that structure in the name of my content item. So instead of just seeing, um, so for instance, maybe I had this dancing dog mp4 in a nested uh, folder, you would see the folder one name followed by a slash, uh, followed by folder two name, followed by a slash, and then it would have dancing dog mp4. Um, so we do persist to the hierarchy uh, based on a content item's name. And then when you download a content item from DuraCloud that has that persisted hierarchy in the name, um, it will automatically be recreated when you download that content item. And I apologize, I should have had a sample of that in one of these spaces, and I don't believe I do. Um, but yes, we can persist the hierarchy, it's just not um, as graphically pleasing in our UI uh, at this point, and that is something that's on our roadmap. Any other questions that I can answer for folks today, either about the uh, service and the demonstration of the, the features that I did today or about the pricing and the plans um, that are available? I'll wait just one moment while, while folks <laughs> potentially type their questions. Um, again, I would encourage everyone to sign up for a two-month free account. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, my email address is csmith at duraspace.org. I will type that into the chat so you don't have to write it down. Um, and I'm the main point of contact for any DuraCloud related questions you have. Um, so feel free to, to contact me for more information or go to our website to find out more. I will be posting today's recording on our DuraCloud YouTube channel uh, later in the week, hopefully. And um, again, if there are no other questions, I really appreciate everybody's um, interest and participation today. Thank you all for the fantastic questions. Um, these really do make the, the sessions uh, worthwhile for me uh, to answer everybody's questions that they, that they have. So thank you all again for joining today's session. And please feel free to contact me if you have any other further questions about DuraCloud. And I 